Whether they're delivering snacks, inspecting public infrastructure, shuttling products across warehouses, or surreptitiously surveilling our homes for our own safety, modern robots are on the move. As robots have steadily outgrown the cozy confines of research labs and expanded into the hustle and bustle of the real world over the past few decades, robotic mobility has become an increasingly important topic of research. We can't have our precious ED-209s tumbling down every flight of stairs they come across, now can we? We've already seen some incredible and unique solutions to the challenges of getting robots from point A to point B. Oregon State University, for example, has developed Cassie, a bipedal robot that's little more than a set of ostrich-like legs, but can traverse urban infrastructure just as easily as it climbs grassy knolls. There's also Leonardo from Caltech. Leo, as it's known to his developers, combines a pair of spindly legs with a set of rotors that enable the robot to helicopter itself over any set of stairs it doesn't want to actually climb manually. It also rides a mean skateboard and can even go slacklining. And who can forget the jaw-dropping parkour performance of Boston Dynamics Atlas and the, uh, well, smooth moves, I guess, of Tesla's robot? But nobody's had the vision, the drive, to strap an honest-to-god jetpack onto the back of a pint-sized robot and see if they can make it actually fly. Nobody, that is, until Dr. Daniela Pucci came along. Dr. Pucci and his team from the Artificial and Mechanical Intelligence Lab at the Italian Institute of Technology have been using an iCub humanoid robot for their research into how one might consistently and safely get a 22 kilogram robot airborne a la Tony Stark. The team also leverages a four point turbine setup as its propulsion system. You might recognize that style of jetpack as it is quite similar to the one that daredevil aviationist Richard Browning wore during his recent Guinness World Record breaking flight. The iCub, which is actually an acronym for Cognitive Universal Body, was designed by the Robot Cub Consortium of several European universities and was first built at the IIT more than a decade ago. It's roughly the size of a four-year-old, and for good reason. The open source robot was originally developed to test hypotheses about embodied cognition, the theory that human cognition develops based on our interactions with the surrounding environment, as small children do. Consequently, the iCub can both crawl and toddle about, grasp small objects, solve three-dimensional puzzles, and, for some reason, competently shoot a bow and arrow? You know, as all human four-year-olds can do. By making an iCub flight-worthy, Pucci and his team hope to lay the foundations for a line of emergency robots capable of serving as first responders to the roughly 300 natural disasters that kill around 90,000 people worldwide every year. Humanoid robots have an advantage over animal-like builds such as snake bots or spots, as well as traditional UAVs when it comes to disaster response. That's because they can more easily manipulate our human world. Of course, when a disaster strikes, much of that human-centric infrastructure may be damaged or otherwise rendered impassable, which negates many of the humanoid robot's initial advantages. But by combining a humanoid design with the capability of powered flight, Pucci's team can leverage the best aspects of both technologies but don't expect to be pulled from the rubble by a toddler-shaped mechanical EMT anytime soon. iCub, or Iron Cub when it's wearing its jump pack, is largely just being used as a stand-in for human test pilots as the II team works out the physics of the relatively new flight system. And even once the Iron Cub is ready for free flight, Pucci envisions it more readily serving to inspect the exterior portions of damaged buildings after natural disasters than actively rescuing those trapped underneath them. Flying humanoid robots, we are truly living in the future. What could possibly go wrong? I mean, it's not like some maniac's gonna go try to weld a flamethrower onto one of these or anything. <laughs>